Welcome to this video on solutions and how to separate mixtures. Um, this is suitable for students studying IGCSE in chemistry. So we'll start by defining some key terms that are to be used when we're talking about solutions. Um, so what actually is a solution? Well a solution forms when a solid dissolves in a liquid. And so an example of this is salt water. When salt, sodium chloride, uh, mixes with the water and you stir it, the white solid particles of the sodium chloride effect or look like they've disappeared. You can't see them anymore. And that's because they've gone into solution. Um, so a solution is where you have a mixture of a solid and you can no longer see it in the liquid. Um, sand and water is not a solution. Uh, because if you put sand in water, um, you can still see the sand. It doesn't disappear. So that's not a solution. Whereas salt in water, salt disappears. You put sugar in a cup of tea and stir it, the sugar appears to disappear. Uh, but we know it's still there. When we drink the cup of tea, it's sweet tasting. So the sugar is definitely still there. You just can't see it. So it's a solution. Now, the solute in the solution is the solid which has dissolved. Okay, so the solid which has dissolved in the solution, or in fact in the liquid, and the liquid, uh, my writing is even worse because uh, I've picked up a bit of moisture on the screen of the iPad, I apologise for that, um, and the solvent is the liquid part of the solution. So it's the liquid which has had solid, or the solute, dissolved in it. So in the case of salt water, the solute would be the salt, and the solvent would be the water. Sugar water, the sugar would be the solute, the solvent would be the water. And solubility refers to how much solute can dissolve in a particular volume of the solvent. So it's a numerical value. So how much solute can dissolve in a particular volume of solvent. And you might look at how solubility varies with temperature. So as the temperature of the solvent goes up, you can actually dissolve more solute in there. Um, if you take water and have one sample which is cold and one sample which is hot, you can dissolve much more sugar in the hot solvent, the hot water, than in the cold water. So solubility actually increases with temperature uh, for solids. Uh, and we're going to discuss that much more in a later video. Uh, the phrase insoluble is referred to solutes that do not dissolve. So an example that I've already used uh, is sand. When you put that in water, um, no matter how much you stir the sand up with whatever you want to stir it with, um, the sand never dissolves. It's insoluble. Whereas salt is soluble. And so the term soluble is used to describe solutes that do dissolve. And it might depend on the solvent. Sometimes you get something which is soluble in water, but is insoluble in other liquids, and vice versa. Sometimes something is insoluble in water, but is soluble in a different liquid. So quite often when we're talking about whether something is soluble or insoluble, we have to state the solvent. We say it's soluble in water, or it's insoluble in water, or maybe it's soluble in ethanol, or insoluble in ethanol. 
And the final term for solutions that we're going to look at is the term saturated solution. And that's when you've got so much solute dissolved in a solution that you cannot add any more solute and get the solution to dissolve. So is it, it's a solution that contains the maximum amount of solute dissolved. No more solute can dissolve. And as I said earlier, we will look in future videos at studying the effects of temperature on the solubility of certain solutes. But that concludes our look at solutions. I'm afraid it's really just a run through of the key terms. And what we're going to look at now is how to separate various mixtures. So we will start off by separating a mixture of two liquids. Let's have a look. Well, I hope we are. Let's have a look at what slide we've got next. Phew. It is a mixture of two liquids. And to do this, we're going to use distillation. Now, in the diagram that I pinched off the internet, uh, we're separating salt water. But you could use a mixture of two liquids. Uh, let's say we could use water mixed with ethanol. And this process works by heating the mixture. And you might use a Bunsen to provide the heat, or in fact you might just use um, a hot plate. Um, and you might choose not to use a Bunsen because there's a possibility that whatever you're producing from the uh, separation might be flammable. So sometimes you might like to think about avoiding using a Bunsen burner if one of your products is flammable. And the process works because, let's say for example, your two liquids, they have a different boiling point. And so the component which has the lower boiling point, in other words, the one that evaporates most easily, when its boiling point is reached, starts to evaporate. And when it evaporates, it turns from a liquid into a gas. So the gas travels up through this glassware here. And it hits the thermometer. So the thermometer registers the temperature of that gas. So it shows the boiling point of the gas stroke substance, which is actually being collected. And that's very, very useful because substances have a very specific boiling point. And if I'm heating a mixture and a gas travels up here and gives a temperature reading on the thermometer of 100 degrees Celsius, that tells me that the substance, well, the gas that's around here, is probably going to be water because water has a boiling point of 100 degrees C. If the gas travels up here, and gives a reading on the thermometer of about 78, that tells me that the substance is ethanol. I know as a chemist that the boiling point of ethanol is 78. You're not expected to know that. But what I'm just trying to show you is that the thermometer reading is used to try and identify the component which, is ev which has evaporated. Notice the thermometer is at this sort of junction in our glassware. The thermometer is not down here in the round bottom flask. Uh, when you're in the sixth form, uh, you have to set this apparatus up yourself, and quite often I see six formers with the thermometer all the way down here, or even in the liquid. That's completely wrong. You want it up here at the junction, because your gas evaporates off here, hits the thermometer, gives a temperature reading, and then the gas then travels down this tube here, and it reaches what we call a condenser. And the condenser is a tube, and it's surrounded by another tube, and in this tube, the outer tube, you have cold water that runs in and then comes out. And that keeps this tube nice and cold. So as soon as the hot gas hits the inside of that tube there, it condenses. It turns back into a liquid. And the liquid then drips down and is collected 
and here we've got a conical flask you might choose to collect it in a test tube and here's our distillate and if it was salt water we'd be collecting pure water if we're mixing water and ethanol we'd be collecting ethanol first because that's got the lower boiling point it's always important that you put the water into your condenser at the bottom because that gives the most efficient cooling of the condenser and that's something that gets met in A-level chemistry. So this whole process works because um, liquids have different boiling points. So evaporate at different temperatures. And you will be expected to talk through this process. You will be expected to know that the component with the lower boiling point evaporates, hits the thermometer, gives the boiling point of that substance and then moves down and this gas hits the condenser. It cools, condenses and then drips into this conical flask as a liquid. So you'll notice that I haven't written everything down on here. So you might need to watch this slide a couple of times and add a couple of points to your diagram. Here we have evaporation, here we have condensation. And that concludes part one of this video on solutions and how to separate mixtures.